So we are looking at the Maroka brake. I'm finally getting around to working on my magnetic cutout switches to go with the e-bike, the electric 2.0. So I made this lever. This is the magnetic switch kit that you have to buy. Comes with 3M tape and it'll stick right to your brake master cylinder assembly, brake lever master cylinder assembly. Now this, this little flat rod, I hammered it out from a piece of scrap stock that I had in my toolbox. Made the bends. It goes into the lever here around this pivot, which kind of holds it in place. It's got the bend to follow the contour of the master cylinder. And right here it has a flip out. And that flip out is where the magnet's going to go. And that gives you enough, enough travel to trip the switch. So this is my other lever looking at it on the bench and on the bench I have this one's already got the magnet attached with a piece of heat shrink around it to cover up the magnet so we got that little rod I'm still gonna get around to painting it so then this switch I mean this is the magnet see it catches a screwdriver that's gonna have the switch sitting right here next to it as I just showed you just like this and then as it moves away from the switch, it's going to, uh, the switch is in a normally open position. The magnet closes its contacts, but when it moves away, it will trigger the switch just like that. And there's a little bit of fine tuning adjustments here to do. But all in all, it's just a little lever that has to be moved by the uh, lever handle. It has to have a little bit of action to it and that should get my brakes cutting out the way I want to when I stop. So this is the magnet that comes with the kit and it as you can see is just captured there onto that metal rod. Back to the bike this little magnet's gonna go right on there just like that. So this magnet will stick to that little bracket and move just like that sorry for the noise guys so that little magnets gonna sit on that bracket like that I'm gonna cover it with a little piece of heat shrink and that's gonna be my trigger so I took this lever off so you can get a look at it <clears throat> excuse me so I took this lever off so you can take a look inside that inside here if I can get a focus where that metal rod comes through right at that right at the thick point of the um, brake lever so it's already got a pretty good uh, pretty good mounting in there and it so it goes up goes around the pivot and goes right in like that and I am going to drop just a little bit of hot glue hot glue in there on that metal rod see there there you can see it right there a little bit of hot glue so take yourself a little bit of heat shrink. See this little bit of heat shrink? You're going to have to stretch it. So you're going to have to come up with a way to stretch it. Now I had this pair of pliers that um, I'm just using them in reverse to spread the heat shrink. And this stuff will bounce back to its original shape if you let it. So you got to give it a stretch there. Stretch it out. Slide in your heat shrink. Now if you don't get it in there pretty good when the heat shrink shrinks, it'll it'll jump right out of there on you. But then you can give it a little bit of a trim. Now you have a magnet in a little heat shrink pocket. That's a little better. Okay, so to recap this, there's a little metal, little metal lever that I hammered out and bent right there. This is a magnet with a piece of heat shrink over it, which I'm going to apply heat to. And then 
this little magnetic switch is going to go right here stuck to this master cylinder and the magnet is going to trip it which i will have to verify that it works that we're close enough and we'll get to that in a minute using this little snap-on soldering gun this uh, it's not snap-on this is a power probe power probe 50. i really like this little gun i didn't think i would it's usb uh, lithium battery in it and it works really good so let's see if we can shrink this All right, so we have applied the heat shrink. So what I'm finding is when you take this magnetic switch, the one you're going to have to attach to your master cylinder, it will spin the wheel even with that far away. So you can have a it's pretty powerful magnet. So you don't even, you don't have to sweat the small details, just peel it and put it, stick it on there. I'm going to be doing that right now. Squeaky rear brake. Not going to be there long. So I got an alcohol wipe, some glass cleaner stuff, and I'm going to clean that off so it sticks. And I'm going to pull back on this boot because I don't want it to stick to that boot. Let that dry. Refit it here. What 3M has really made a name for itself. You don't have good good stick stiction unless you got 3M. So here we go. We're gonna put it right there. And I left a little bit of gap because it, it's, I don't want contact there. And I've already tested it. So let's see if the rear wheel spins. The rear wheel spins. And I heard it go off. The wheel doesn't spin, doesn't spin, doesn't spin, doesn't spin, doesn't tear. Right there. So, that is a win-win, guys. Now I gotta do the rear brake. And I will have to paint that black. And let's push this weather boot up here a little bit. And that stuff feels permanent. All right, I got, uh, all right. And that is all there is to hooking up some electric uh, cutout switches on a Maroka brake lever. Not the most elegant because it's not painted. And, you know, if you really wanted to get into this corner and make that uh, a better bend there. I don't have a vise. I had to bend this with a few couple pairs of pliers. But it gets the job done. And you know what? At the end of the day, that's what I'm looking for.